Okay, today we're going to dehydrate some tomatoes in the sun oven. So I've got three racks that came with my sun oven. Um, I don't put the food directly on them because these racks are kind of weird and the acid um, from the tomatoes kind of does weird stuff to them. So I put some parchment paper on it, which is not ideal because it's white. It'd be better if it was something darker colored. But since we're dehydrating and not cooking, it really won't be that bad, okay? Um, and it'll keep it clean. And I'll poke a few holes through, you know, like just to allow the um, airflow to continue through it. I'm just really doing it just so my tomatoes aren't sitting directly on the racks. And like I said, I just don't like, I don't know what they're made of, but it kind of has a reaction, so they might be some type of aluminum or something. But anyway, um, we're going to dehydrate these in the sun oven. And the way you dehydrate in the sun oven is you want to keep the stove, the sun oven turned away from the sun. Usually when you're cooking, you want it in the sun. But when you're dehydrating, you don't want it to get too hot. So you want to keep it turned away from the sun. And I don't lock the latches. And now, it depends on the weather outside, but it can take up to two days to dehydrate in your sun oven, so don't be impatient. And in the evening, it's best, since it won't be hot like that, to go ahead and latch it down and then let them finish during the next day, open up the latches and let them dry again. So we're gonna, just like if we were dehydrating in the normal, in my Excalibur, my knife was sharp, but it seems kind of like not so sharp right now, but anyway, um, if I was dehydrating in the Excalibur, I'd cut them between um, a fourth of an inch thick and an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to do the same thing here, okay? The key, like with any dehydrating, is going to be airflow, and that's why you need to have space between your racks. Okay, I've got all the tomatoes sliced and stacked on the three racks, as you'll see. And the racks are nice because they just kind of fit into each other the way they're shaped. And again, these are the ones that came with my sun oven, so um, they're made to fit in there. It's really kind of nice. Um, but anyway, so I punched holes into all the parchment paper. And it's just were normally, if I had more, I would probably can them at this stage. But, you know, sometimes it's really nice to have some... Uh, sun-dried tomatoes is basically what they are. They're dehydrated, but they're sun-dried. And last year we dehydrated some, and they were so sweet. We actually found that we were eating them for snacks, just plain like they are. But they're really great for, you know, like when you're making soups and stews and, you know, depending on your different recipes, maybe even chilies. So um, we just love to have some dehydrated tomatoes around. And then you can just pop them on the shelves. They're so easy to store. They take up very little space and it's a great way when you've got fresh tomatoes and you don't have enough to can but there's too many to eat so then dehydrating is the way to go okay so I now have the three racks in the sun oven and you'll see I have the glass sitting on top of the latch because it is I don't know if you can see that 200 degrees and don't forget Keep the sun oven turned away from the sun to keep that temperature down, okay? Okay, after 30 hours in the sun oven, this is what the cherry tomatoes look like that we put in. And some of them are pretty close to done, and others still have a bit of a way to go. Now the sliced tomatoes were um, Amish paste, so they're not as watery, and they dried in the 30 hour assembly dried before then, so we just took them out. And so those are nicely done. And like I said, it took roughly between 27 and 30 hours for the ones that were sliced between an eighth and a fourth of an inch.